guys, Max Brallier here, and um, I'm gonna do a little reading from The Last Kids on Earth, June's Wild Flight, which is um, the most recent book in the Last Kids on Earth series. And um, it's the first, we call it a super rad solo episode. It's like a um, sort of side quest adventure starring June Del Toro um, from her point of view. And it was like, I don't know, just ridiculously fun to write a story. Um, in this, in the last kid's world, but it wasn't um, about Jack. It wasn't just about Jack Sullivan, the main character. It was about uh, from different someone else's point of view and um, introducing all sorts of like ridiculously new, fun, crazy monsters. Um, it was very fun to write. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read. Uh, I'm gonna start uh, chapter four to get like right into the action. Even though it already starts with action, um, I like this chapter. So I'm gonna read chapter four, chapter five. Um, enjoy if you if you do enjoy if you do. Um, if you don't want to get mad at you. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, my chair spins, so I'm spinning a lot here. Chapter four. I'm pretty fast, not bragging, just saying. Every grade always has the fast kid. I was never the fast kid, but I was a fast kid. I used to be able to run from my house to the school bus stop three blocks away in 99 seconds. The bus left at 7.12 a.m. and my dad always insisted I leave the house at 7 a.m. sharp for no reason. I could have left at 7.10 a.m. and still made to the bus stop with 32 seconds to spare. More, the driver stopped off for a chocolate chunk muffin, which he usually did. Did you have any idea just how much stuff I could get done between 7 and 7.10? Give me 10 minutes and I'll write you a detailed list. But you know what? None of that speed matters when you are stuck inside a doom cart being dragged behind a giant ogre. If I could get off, I could run, but I can't. Get off because the Rifters chain, Rifters are like uh, monster pirates in this world, uh, has turned this doom cart into a tiny version of a space shuttle re-entering Earth's atmosphere, bits and pieces flying off, sparking, screeching, metal nearly melting. I'm just stuck here along for the ride. I try to pay attention to where we are, where we're going, but it's all a blurry jumble of scenery. Suddenly, shriek! The creatures, monstrous howl, the Rifters must be closing in, and then suddenly a wooden shed ahead. I'm in someone's backyard. The ogre is stomping through an overgrown backyard. Yikes, I cry out, lifting the shield just as smash. The shed does serious damage. The steering wheel pops up and nearly takes off my left ear. My fancy new shield is busted up. My spear, slung over my back, snaps in half. But it's not all bad. Looking down, I see that I'm free, I shout. The chain, which had entangled me, is now hooked to the pedal, not my foot. Sure, I'm still inside a quickly disintegrating doom cart, but at the very least, I'm not trapped. Now I just need a way to get off this thing. I need something I can jump to. Something that will break my fall without, you know, breaking me. Like a haystack, or a bouncy castle, or the world's most epic pillow fort. Unfortunately, within my immediate range of vision, I see no haystacks, no bouncy castles, and no epic pillow forts. But, hmm, I do spot something like a mound of oversized M&Ms, globes of color, oranges and blues and faded greens. I realize it's better than any bouncy pillow haystack for it. A ball pit! Okay, you germy pool of plastic, I think. Here I come. And with that, I hurl myself from the doom cart in a daring doom cart escape. This was a bad idea. I land in a heap and sink into the ball pit. I keep my eyes screwed shut, listening to the sound of the ogre's trampling feet fading into the distance. My elbows and knees are scraped. My teeth seem to be vibrating, and I'm mostly positive I swallowed a bug, possibly a bird. But that's okay, cause I'm alive, I cry out. Alive, alive, and I have no idea where I am. I look around, trying to get my bearings, but I have no bearings. Zero bearings. I am 100% lost right now until a clue. All the balls have the letters BB on them. That means that this is, or was, a blooper burger. Looking inside, I see an old jukebox, a soda fountain, a statue of the big guy himself, Sir Blooper Burger, but his head is hanging off his body and his creepy french fry fingers are broken off. Although this isn't a huge help, blooper burger joints are everywhere and they're all identical. No joke, their slogan is, it's not a town without a blooper burger. At least that's usually their slogan. Sometimes the end of the world writes its own slogan, like own a bug. Yeah, thanks, I just ate one actually. I drag my tired, wounded body across the ball pit, which is a bit like moving through rainbow colored quicksand. I manage to pull myself up and out and flop onto the cracked, broken 
blooper burger floor. After the sound of bouncing plastic balls stops, I notice something. It's quiet, extra quiet. Over the past years, I've gotten kind of used to constant, nonstop, forever and forever noise. There's jacks yakety yakking, the hum of Quinn's electricity sucking gadgets, the shrieks and roars of passing beasts, and the never-ending chorus of snores and belches and barks that dripped over from Joe's Pizza. But suddenly now, it's like someone hit the mute button. This is silence I haven't known since the months after the world ended, since I was alone in Parker in middle school. Back then, I hated the silence, but now it's kind of peaceful, kind of perfect. It's like the silence is telling me, June, you are on your own in the mysterious, unexplored unknown that lies beyond Wakefield. It's a new world, and I'm here, alone. Kind of rad. That's just a little bit of, uh, thank you. So let's just, thank you very much. That's just a little bit of The Last Kids on Earth, June's Wild Flight. Um, available wherever books are sold. Pick it up if you need to read. Um, hit up your local library. If you need something to um, entertain you. Hopefully entertain you. I'm going to give you a little writing prompt right now. Um, for any writers out there, and also artists too, illustrators, if you wanna draw something. Um, that's what I used to do when I had, um, that's what I used to do all the time. Just doodle and draw and write. Um, okay, so this one is, uh, imagine you are um, either in the world of the last kids on earth or in your own world, and you meet some sort of really strange, bizarre monster. Um, what is that monster's name? What would it look like? What is it doing? What does it smell like? Um, does it have a big giant weapon? What is it up to? Does it like to play Monopoly? Everything, just um, sort of, I wanna know about this monster. Write about it, draw it. And fun, that's it, yeah. Um, all right, thanks for reading, guys. The Last Kids on Earth, June's Wild Flight, is available now. And the next book in this series, The Last Kids on Earth and the Skeleton Road comes out. September 15th. All right, that's it. Bye-bye.